2019, guys, is now over, and it ended in the 2019 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, a race that was not too great and was, you know, it had its moments, but it wasn't too great of a Grand Prix, which is to be expected because of this track. But it did, again, have its moments. And in this video, I am going to review the events of the final race of 2019. But first, before we get into the teams and how they did, Let's first get into the results, the official results for now, before Charles Leclerc is probably disqualified uh, from the race. Let's get into the provisional results of this Grand Prix. The Lewis Hamilton dominantly wins the Grand Prix from Max Verstappen second, Leclerc third, Bottas fourth, Vettel fifth, Albon sixth, and then Perez P7, Norris P8, Kvyat P9, and Carlos Sainz nicking a point in P10. And from P11 to P19, the drivers that finish but not in the points are uh, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Raikkonen, Magnussen, Grosjean, Giovinazzi, Russell, Gasly, Kubica, and your only retirement, Lance Stroll in the racing point. But now let's get into the teams. First off, Mercedes for Lewis Hamilton. He dominated the weekend, didn't he? Pole position, clear pole position, new track record in qualifying, a new lap record in the race right at the end of the Grand Prix, a 139.2. 17 odd seconds clear of Verstappen. Yes, he had the best car this weekend, but it wasn't that quick. And you cannot doubt that this weekend he has completely rinsed the field. He's completely destroyed the field. And what a win it was. There was no doubt that Lewis Hamilton was going to win this Grand Prix. And well done to him. And again, clearly driver of the day for me from this Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas, P4, probably going to be P3 in the end. Very good drive. I still think the car was kind of this weekend doing the work for him because the car is very quick this weekend. And I think that definitely helped Valtteri's performance. But still, coming back from P20 to what is probably a podium position, still a very good result. And Valtteri, I think, can be happy with that. And I think Valtteri really from this season, of course, can be very happy as well. Because this time last year, we thought Valtteri had no chance of being in this car in 2020 and in this season you cannot doubt Valtteri Bottas has proved his doubters wrong won races very well and has shown to us that he can compete at the top level so great season for Valtteri great season for Lewis Hamilton and for the team as well next up Ferrari I said coming into this weekend even if you're slow which they were in comparison to Mercedes and Red Bull even if you're slow, have a normal weekend, a normal boring weekend, and they can't even have that. In qualifying, Vettel spins in Q1, and Leclerc misses the chance to do another lap. And then before the races even began, Charles Leclerc's car, or, you know, the Ferrari with his car, have basically broken a technical regulation to do with the fuel load. How does this team do it? How do they do it? How do they manage to screw up this many times in a season? It's getting to the point where I don't think we've ever seen a team screw up this much in a season. Like, it's actually record-breaking. It's unbelievable how bad this team is. Unbelievable. Charles Leclerc, though, in terms of his own driving, um, yeah, he did well, did very well. I think Charles Leclerc... Did the best he could this weekend. Because again, the Ferrari car is so slow in that final sector. I think Charles Leclerc, again, did the very best he could with what he was given. Even though if Bottas started where he qualified, Leclerc would have had no hope of being on the podium. Even if he, you know, didn't get disqualified from the Grand Prix. But yeah, Leclerc did well. The finish in P3 on the track. Sebastian Vettel P5. Vettel this weekend just hasn't been that quick. He was, though, very unlucky uh, during the second stint of the Grand Prix. First with the pit stop that was about five seconds too long. And then, because DRS was broken, couldn't then pass Bottas and Hulkenberg, who were holding him up. And that cost him about 15 seconds to teammate Leclerc over the course of, what, six or seven laps. So... Yeah, very unlucky there for Sebastian. Pitted again, then passed Albon and finished in P5. But this weekend, Sebastian really just hasn't been that quick at all. Uh, but for Leclerc and Vettel this season, they've had their ups and downs. They've had you know quite a few mistakes, good moments here and there. Ferrari, though, as a team, 
They're not even a serious racing team anymore, are they? They're a joke. They're an absolute joke. And how anyone out there can even consider this team able to win the World Championship next season is, is unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable. This team has no hope of winning in 2020 because even on a weekend where there's nothing to fight for, they still make errors like this. They're... They're, they're completely ridiculous. Again, no pressure on this weekend. No pressure at all. And they still crack under pressure. Unbelievable. Anyway, let's now get on to Red Bull Racing. Max Verstappen, P2. Really the best he could do today. Lewis Hamilton was always going to win this race as soon as he you know, maintained the lead off of um, the first lap. Did fall behind Charles Leclerc, um, and that's really because Verstappen, I don't think, fired up his tyres quick enough, or the Red Bull car wasn't uh, firing up his tyres quick enough, and Leclerc, because of the extra straight line speed, passed Verstappen, and then Verstappen really, up until the first pit stop, was not really closing on Leclerc, but then Verstappen uh, pitted a lot later than Leclerc, caught Leclerc, passed him very nicely, and finished in P2. Max. Didn't have the greatest weekend this weekend, but to be honest, given the car he's had, I think he did probably the best he could. Again, it wasn't him at his finest this weekend, uh, speed-wise, but I think he did the best he could given the circumstances. Alex Alban finishing P6. I'm sorry, he has to do better. He's raced here before, so he doesn't have the excuse of, well, he's not raced here before. He was way too slow today, Albon. Way too slow. He should have been really in there with Leclerc Bottas at the end. I'm not saying he should have been ahead of them, but been fighting them. His speed today was simply not good enough. And going into 2020, all I ask of Alex Albon is this. Be within two and a half to three tenths of a second per lap within your team at Max Verstappen. And you will be in a position to fight for podiums in 2020, which has to be really, for Albon, um, the aim. But if he continues like this, then Albon is just going to end up being another Pierre Gasly. Uh, but simply, this weekend, I'm sorry, not good enough. Not good enough at all for Alex Albon. Uh, but for Red Bull, good season. Max Verstappen has driven very well. Alex Albon has had a good season, no doubt about it. But he can do better. I, I know he can do better, just needs, I think, the off-season to really grow with the team and testing and hopefully comes back uh, better next season. But Red Bull, good season, and it could be a much better one next season if they start the season off a bit quicker than they did in 2019. But now, into the midfield. And Renault, first off, um, had... Mostly a good race up until the end of the Grand Prix where, uh, you know, Ricardo pitted late on and did not get the point. And Hulkenberg stayed out but got overtook by his teammate and Carlos Sainz at the end. That is a shame. Of course, Hulkenberg officially got driver of the day. But, um, yeah, Renault's race just kind of fell apart, didn't it, at the very end of the Grand Prix. And that kind of sums up their season. Looking promising, but then all falls apart very quickly. And yeah, Renault, I think, really lost a good points finish on strategy. I'm not saying that they were heading for an amazing result, but definitely could have done more strategically in this race to get a better finish than what they got, which was no points. Uh, but for the season, Renault, not good enough. We know that, not good enough. This team should be not fighting Toro Rosso tooth and nail in the Constructors' World Championship. They should be miles clear of Toro Rosso. And Toro Rosso have ended up, what, six points behind at the end of this season. That is not good enough for Renault. They've got to be right there next season with McLaren, if not ahead. They've got to be. If they're not, then Renault in 2021 and 2022, they're basically a dead team. And there's no real point in them continuing, you know, going forward. So next season, they've got to get it right or it's bust for this team. Next up, McLaren. And McLaren, I think, uh, did pretty well. Lando Norris finishing in P8. And I think Lando did the best he could. Sergio Perez, of course, passed him at the end. But Perez was on much fresher tyres. And I think Lando did pretty well 
to last as long as he did ahead of Sergio Perez in the Grand Prix. The Lando P8, very good drive. Carlos Sainz P10. Maybe if he didn't pit, he would have had a better finish. But I think Carlos Sainz finishing P10, given how his race went, that's about right for what he did in the Grand Prix. But for McLaren, great season. Hopefully, they continue the progression into 2020. They don't need to be fighting for podiums next season. But if they can be about a second a lap off the pace, or within that, just about within that, uh, compared to the front-running teams, then I think McLaren might be able to get a surprise podium next season and actually be on the podium this time. The two drivers have driven well. Carlos Sainz has been one of the best drivers this season. And yeah, McLaren... Great season. Hopefully, the progression can continue. Next up, Alfa Romeo. Alfa had a very good start to the race. Antonio Giovinazzi got up to 12th. Kimi Raikkonen had an okay start to the race. Uh, but then for Giovinazzi, fell apart after hitting, I think, too many times and starting on the wrong compound of tyre, basically. And then Kimi Raikkonen, I thought, actually drove very well today. But because he's in a car that this weekend is the slowest in the midfield, he, I think, 13 in the end it was, was the best he could do. Because that car, again, is just not good enough. But um, for this race, yeah, Alpha did all right, considering the speed of their car. For the season, though, Alpha can do better. We know that. Alpha Romeo can do a lot better than what they've done this season. Pace-wise, Alpha probably sh should have finished in sixth in the Constructors. Because their car at times this season was... Really, really quick. But they just don't have consistency. But hopefully, keeping the same driver lineup for next season and having a car that's maybe a bit quicker will allow them to then go after P6 or even P5 in the Constructors. Next up is Haas F1. Uh, Roman Grosjean didn't really have a good race at all, but that was to be expected. Kevin Magnussen had a great race, in my opinion. At the start, sailing around the outside of Holkenberg down into the first uh, chicane at the end of the first sector. And I actually thought, considering how bad the Haas car normally uh, is on race pace, I thought Kevin did pretty well to be within touching distance of a point um, in the final few laps of the Grand Prix. So I think Kevin Magnussen, honestly, did the best he could. So good drive by Magnussen. Grosjean, though, didn't really do that well. Uh, but for Haas F1, this season simply has not been good enough. Uh, they have had shocking race pace. They've only been good really at, what, two of the 21 races in 2019. And next season, that cannot be tolerated. They've got to really return to what they were like in 2018. Because they've got to start really fighting again in the midfield with the drivers they do have. Because if they don't, then... Their Formula 1 future is not looking too special. Uh, next up, Toro Rosso. I think Toro Rosso, considering how the race went, uh, did the best they could. Daniel Kvyat started, what was it, 14th or 13th on the hard compound tyre. Drove very well to get P9. Very good strategy by Toro Rosso. Pierre Gasly, though, finishing in 18th place. Nothing he could do at the start. Lance Stroll uh, just simply ran into him. Nothing Gasly could do. But yeah, Toro Rosso today did the best they could. And I think Toro Rosso, honestly, this season have been one of the best performing teams. If you take out money and resources of all the teams, if you look at pure track side performance, I think Toro Rosso have been one of the better teams this season. You know, up there in the top three or four teams. Very, very good uh, performances by all the drivers. Even Pierre Gasly, despite my criticism of him. Toro Rosso car. This season has been the best it's been probably since 2016. And yeah, just very good season. Shame they couldn't get fifth in the Constructors, even though I still will say they deserved it because they did a lot better than Renault considering the resources they have compared to Renault. Uh, but yeah, Toro Rosso, good season. Hopefully next season's Alpha Tori, if they can, you know, benefit from the extra money, uh, prize money they'll get in the Constructors. Hopefully use that. And, you know, replicate this season, but maybe finish a position higher. And the final midfield team is Racing Point. 
and racing point today, except for Lance Stroll, who ran into Gasly and after that his race was over. Uh, with Sergio Perez, they were very, very good. Perez, after Lewis Hamilton, is my driver of the day because even though he started P10 on the tyre he wanted to, his overcut was brilliant. He didn't overcut past Norris and Hulkenberg and drivers like that. But his pace during that phase where he's having to build a gap was very good. He was lapping at the same speed, basically, as Norris and Hulkenberg and Sainz, even though he was on softer but much more worn tyres than those drivers. A great drive by Perez. P7 in the end. And you know what? With Racing Point, I think they're a dark horse for 2020 because if they can keep up a good, steady rate of development in 2020 that they haven't had in 2019, I reckon Racing Point could end up returning to being what they were a couple years ago, which is a front-running midfield team. Because if you look at this season with Racing Point, if they had been between the Spanish Grand Prix and the German Grand Prix as good as they have been since the German Grand Prix, Racing Point probably would have beaten Renault and the Constructors because Racing Point haven't finished that far behind in the constructors so again if they have a good rate of development next season watch out for racing point they might be able to return to being a front-running midfield team and they definitely have i think this season performed well considering the circumstances and then of course the final team is williams who were at the back Hopefully Williams next season return and are not terrible, but we know that they will be terrible because they are a terrible team. But that is it, guys, for 2019. Thank you guys for watching all of my race reviews and, you know, weekend content for all the uh, race weekends in 2019. And until the next video, which will be the incident analysis tomorrow, and until the 2020 Formula 1 season, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.